The Emoji Movie is trending on Netflix right now. The Emoji Movie from 2017. That old chestnut. I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. No, you, I'm mad. I'm straight up mad. There's no reason why this film should be trending on anything other than top 10 biggest piles of shit ever created. I can't imagine full families are sitting down with popcorn watching this thing. No, I think that kids are running away with the tablets into the corner and watching them in their little tents, their little hiding spots. What sick parent would let their kid willingly watch this? Unless they didn't know. And it's just bad parenting. It's really what it comes down to. And I'm not above it. Um, sadly, years ago when this came out and hit theaters, my daughter really wanted to see it because she loves emojis. The stickers, the poop emoji, all that crap. And she said, there's a movie coming at Dad, Papa. She said to me, Papa, with tears in her eyes, Sir, can I see the emoji movie? And I said, of course, precious little princess, you can go to the movie. And we went. And <laughs> I gave quite the review. I alluded to this a little bit ago, but the video I'm about to present was from 2017. It was a review from then. It's a very scathing, heartfelt, pissed off review of a garbage film. I pulled it off. It's been in the Disney vault for many, many years. Um, you, if you want access to it, along with 300 other exclusives, think about becoming a patron at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. But this one is, is going to be for you right now, free for all to see. And the reason this was originally made private after initially being public for a while was because YouTube back in the Diz around 2017 was really hitting channels that had a lot of profanity, inappropriate commentary, things of that nature. So I was trying to keep the channel from being demonetized or completely shut down. Things have loosened up since then. So <laughs> here we go. I present to you my review of the Emoji Movie. Enjoy. $42. That's what the Emoji Movie cost me. That's what I'm out uh, to purchase the tickets for my two children and myself, the snacks, the concessions. And it's not even being out the money that bothers me so much as it is the pain and anguish my family had to endure. Uh, an eight-year-old child, a five-year-old, should never have to be to bear witness to something of, of this level of, of terrible. And they've seen Norm of the North, so they already know life's not all sticker packs and charms blow pops. There's some real ugly in this world. Typically when I do one of these rants or a feud of a movie that's PG or G, something more family friendly, I try not to swear or say inappropriate things. That's, that's hard for me to do. Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, that's not going to happen here. So if you're a child, just walk away from this video, kiddo. Or if you're a parent, shame on you for letting your child watch this. Turn it off. Have a little bit of a... I mean, you know what? I can't even say shame on you because I took my kids to the Emoji movie, so shame on me. I shit you not, this really happened. Not even 10 minutes into the film, I turn over to my daughter, Olivia, who's eight. She looks up at me with like the saddest doe eyes I've ever seen. And she said, Dad, I've made a huge mistake. She's never even seen Arrested Development. And that immediately triggered my mind. I'm like, this, this kid's amazing. But yes, she made a huge mistake because she's the big emoji fan. She's got the stupid pillows. She's got like the, the poop emoji. She's got stickers, uh, all that crap. She loves Shopkins, Hatchimals, all the other things kids are into. I don't judge. I was in all that crap too when I was a kid. I had my own versions of them. Pogs, Teddy Ruxpin, Garbage Pail Kids, the Three Ninjas franchise, Trolls, which for some reason came back, Micro Machines, which are fucking awesome. So I did my fatherly duty. <laughs> you better believe that joke's in the film. The poop says it. Played by uh, Sir... Patrick Stewart, who I think was held at gunpoint to do this role. He has no more than five sentences. He probably did it for one of his grandkids who likes the stupid emoji stuff. So, you know, whatever. He made a lot of money, I'm sure, for a very easy day's work. I'm not going to knock him for that. I've never in my life watched a full movie from beginning to end in a zombified state with drool coming down my mouth, looking up at the screen. I'm not alive. I'm not dead. I'm just in some middle ground. Just... Not even digesting what I'm seeing. It's because it's so fucking terrible. It's the same plot I've seen 8,000 times, told better. The animation's stilted. It doesn't look very good. It's not bad. I mean, clearly there's some talented animators here, but there's nothing creative at all. We have the same exact fucking plot as Wreck-It Ralph with a, a game world inside of the real world. There's even a glitched character. 
there's another character who's in disguise, who left her game, who it's revealed later is going to have a friendship. It's just, it's the same fucking movie as Wreck-It Ralph. It's the same fucking movie. And then there's concepts taken from Pixar's other movies. It's just, it's so pathetic. It's such a waste of time and energy. And everything you watch is just mindless. It's numbing. It's what I imagine my wife thinks when we uh, have sex. Typically, I would run down some of the actors in the film, the characters they played, talked about their performances, but I don't care. I don't care enough to do that. T.J. Miller's in it as Gene. He's the main guy. Whatever. He's meh. His performance is meh. These are the kind of jokes that are in this film, by the way. Like, whatever you think is the most superficial, top-level comment you can make, that's the joke. Oh, do you guys remember spam emails? Yeah? Okay, well, there's a character named Spam, and she's just annoying. Uh, huh? Kids don't know what the fuck spam email is. Who's this movie for? That's the question that constantly runs through my head is, what? What, what the fuck is this? And the characters don't matter at all because this movie's not about characters. No, 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 no. This movie is about product placement. This movie is about uh, franchises. It's about branching out. It's about selling other things besides emoji shit. Um, oh, do you like Spotify, kids? Do you listen to Spotify or even have a fucking clue what it is if you're under seven years old? No? It doesn't matter. Your parents do, and they probably use it. So let's put Spotify in there. Why? I, I don't know. I have no idea why they went in there. They said they had to ride the, the sound waves to get to the trash or something. It doesn't make any fucking sense. They go in there, and they ride these stupid sound waves for a little bit, and they're out. It's done in like three minutes. The main character in this movie is Dropbox. The name is mentioned at least a dozen times. It's the final place they have to get to. And of course, Dropbox is perfect with the gigantic firewall that's super secure. They get by it and they're basically in this cloud city, heavenish sort of a place. Everything's great. Everything is awesome. Another movie that's far better than this, the Lego movie, world within a world type of thing. It's just all been done to death. I hate this movie so goddamn much. Hold your balls, Adam. It can't all be bad, can it? There's got to be some good in this. Well, you know what, John? There is one really fucking great thing. They brought their own dance to the world. The emoji pop, I think is what it's called. Let me show you how it goes. Wink! Cover your eyes. <laughs> Stupid faces. <laughs> Toasty! <laughs> It's a dance, I guess. They are really driving it home. They play it two or three times. They want you to have it at your Sadie Hawkins dance, at your bar mitzvah, at your wedding, everywhere. Emoji, emoji pop. I have my own dance. It's better than this one. It's called Adam Jerks Off. You're free to use it. It's a lot of variations of masturbation techniques. Once again, mom, if you're letting your kid watch this, this is on you. <laughs> Tickler. <laughs> the snake bite. Mm. Mm. The pepper grinder. The lasso. Yeah. The neck snap. Yeah. The French onion soup. I, I, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that means. Fire starter. Patty cake. Rolling the dough. And we put it all together, you got the Adam Dick dance. Let's do it. I don't really know what the message of the film was either. It seemed very post-apocalyptic with the students of a high school glued to their phones 24-7. They can only communicate via emoticons. It's some sad shit. And I refuse to believe that's how it really is in high school. And if it is, then game over. Let's just pack it all up. And for those of you that haven't had their fill yet of women empowerment roles that nobody asked for, pushing an agenda that nobody wants to hear, Emoji has you covered there as well. With a princess who doesn't want to be a princess and is sick of the men holding her down. Talking about back in the day how the women could only be one of two roles. It was very misogynistic. It was very whatever other women's lib terms you want to use. It has no reason to exist in this film. It's insulting, it's stupid, it's out of place, and it reminds me of uh, 
once again, my lovemaking with my wife and how she probably feels about it. When Gene and his buddy Handjob, I, I think his name is High Five, but I'm going to call him Handjob, go to Candy Crush, my daughter turned to me and said, hey, this is from Wreck-It Ralph. I said, no, that's Sugar Rush. I thought, no, it's not, but I could see how you could think that since everything else has been directly ripped off from that film. The film is so boring and so unnecessary, I found myself contemplating deeper things underneath the surface here that the writers clearly had not thought about. For instance, Gene's family, the mess, there's three of them, and they're all meh emoticons. So I thought, can other emoticons fuck? Or can you only bang the same brand? Like, could, could a meh bang a, a crying one? And would they make like a happy one or, a, or like a depressed one? I don't know. The movie certainly doesn't clear that up for me, and that's the kind of stuff I was into, because we saw that there was a father and a son shit. Is there a mom shit? How did the son shit uh, come to be? Do, the, do these things have sex together? I would like to know. There's a point in this story where the characters go to Just Dance, which is an app I, I guess all high schoolers have on their phones, because that's, that's cool and hip. And there is a giant Christina Aguilera avatar. She's the only person that seems to be giving 100% in this movie. And props to her, because she does a fine job with the voice. She's sultry. She's, I found myself attracted to that kind of simplistic looking avatar. At that point in the film, though, I was just craving anything. I digress. She's kind of this glowing looking character stylized. And the game eventually gets destroyed. Spoiler! The game is destroyed along with her and a hand job. And the other two make it out alive, um, Jean and uh, Women's Rights. So they go into the trash to get Handjob safely out. And in there they find the trolls from earlier. And they make sure to show us Christina Aguilera's character, who is now, like, human-looking. She's not in her gamey style anymore. For some reason, going into the trash removes the graphics, I guess. But you, she actually looks better now. She looks more like a person. And I was like, oh, she's even hotter now. Cool. Let's see what happens here. Oh, we're going to go away from her. And then she doesn't get saved. Everybody else is deleted, presumably, with the phone, uh, except for Handjob, who gets out. So it's like, we just, they just fucking killed her. That's awesome. Thanks. This movie's awesome. This movie's really good. I've already spent more time on this movie than the writers did, so I'm going to stop. I was going to feud this with B-Movie, and then later I was going to feud it with Angry Birds. I couldn't decide which one I wanted to do, or if i do all three of them. Maybe throw Norm of the North in there, just make it a full-on shit show. Maybe that's what I do. You want to see a four-way feud? Anyway, thanks for listening to this rambling mess of, of a review, and uh, don't see this film. I also watched... Atomic Blonde, which was fun. It was a good time. I'm going to feud that with John Wick, hopefully next week. So stay tuned for something good. And don't forget about that Adam Dick dance. Hmm. Kids still got it all these years later. I just realized my, my light that should have been on over here was not. It's just been behind me the whole time. How embarrassing. I could have reshot this, but come on, come on. We're not that professional. Hope you enjoyed the video, the rant, the review, whatever you want to call it. Lots of videos over on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. You get access to them for just a dollar. If you want another free service completely, I have a second channel, Adam Does Rants, where I'm bitching up a storm about first world problems in hopefully a funny way for you. If you love this video so much and you can't wait to support this one man band, you can also leave a super thanks right under this video right now. Isn't that, isn't that convenient? Nice. Or become a, a YouTube join supporter, a member, whatever. There's lots of ways to say, hey Adam, I love what you're doing, keep it up. And hopefully I see you stick around the channel. This one and the other one. All right, take care. Smile emoji.